Okay, so now we're going to get into doing some impedance calculations. And before we do that, we need to kind of parameterize the uh, cable options as far as spacing um, because we're going to use this information in the equations. So we've got two different situations, as I mentioned before. We've got concentric neutral and we've got tape shield. Mostly for our homework, we're going to be focusing more on concentric neutral. Um, but anyway, when you have a concentric neutral cable, then you're going to have the core, which is for the phase current, right? And then you'll have insulation. And then what you're going to have is you're going to have a, a kind of like a shield around the insulation. That's what this is right here. And then around that, then you're going to have the concentric neutral conductors. So as far as the important parameters, what you're going to have is you're going to have a diameter for the phase conductor. Then you're going to have a diameter for each of these smaller strand wires. And then you'll have different types of diameters in the tables. You know, one diameter you're going to see is maybe like, a, it, depending on how the tables are set up, is like a diameter associated with the neutral. So that's going to be from the center conductor on one side to the center of the conductor on the other. Sometimes they get into what's referred to as a, um, an outer diameter. This is, it goes from the, to the outside. And so this would be kind of the distance to uh, where the, the outer jacket's gonna start up at. Um, but anyway, you're gonna have these various diameters that you're gonna be using in the calculations in just a little bit. When we talk about tape shield, then basically we're going to have a metallic tape shield around the, the phase conductor. And so this is going to have a certain cross-sectional area. And depending on the material in the cross-sectional area, this is going to have a certain resistance associated with it. Um, there's also going to be another term we call D neutral, which is going from basically the center on one side to the center on the other. Then we're going to have multi-cable systems. Uh, most of the times we'll be talking about three cable systems for three phase. And you'll just simply have three of these concentric neutrals. And depending on how these are mounted, I mean, these could be laying across horizontally or it could be in some other arrangement and, and conduit. But what we're concerned about in this case is what is going to be the distances between the cables. And so this is where you have like DAB, DAC, DBC. Note that D is a, a small d is a diameter um, for an individual cable. The large d is, is typically used to denote distance between conductors. Now, one thing that's kind of confusing about this is that before when we were talking about overhead, we we're talking about say like four wire systems, phases A, B, and C and neutral. In this sort of situation right here, what is the number of wires in this system? Well, we've got two conductors actually for phase A. We've got the phase conductor and then we also have the neutral. There's a phase B conductor and a neutral. There's a phase C conductor and a neutral, but each phase has its own neutral. So in terms of a model, not only do you have the three wires associated with the phase conductors, but what we'll be working with is, I guess, what I would call sort of like a um, equivalent neutral, where you can think about this as a six wire system, all right? And if I actually had a separate neutral, which you could have in some cases, that would be a seven wire system. So it makes things a lot more complex as far as doing different types of calculations. So one cable is actually two wires and we had three cables, that would be six wires. Now, when we have concentric neutral case where we got this phase conductor that's surrounded by these smaller neutral strands, um, we're still gonna go and get numbers like the GMR for the phase conductor, or we're still gonna get the resistance of the phase conductor. But when we talk about the neutral, what are we going to use for the GMR? Because there's a GMR for one strand of the neutral, 
But then what we have to do is we want to get the values for an equivalent neutral. We're going to have a number of these strands put together. And so I'm not going to go through a derivation on this, but what it turns out what you're going to have for this equivalent system, when you talk about the equivalent neutral, um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, there's an expression for the GMR for the neutral for a given cable where that equivalent GMR is going to be the cube root of the GMR from one of those strands times the number of strands you have times the diameter of the neutral divided by two to the n minus one power. So keep in mind that that diameter of the neutral is this spacing distance right here. So GMR for the individual strand of the wire, but that's going to differ from the GMR of the, the, the whole group of wires. All right. If we want to calculate the equivalent resistance in neutral, that's pretty easy because basically it looks like you have all these wires in parallel. So if you have the resistance of one of the individual strands and you just divide by the number of wires in parallel and you get the equivalent resistance of the entire neutral. Now, the next thing you get into is you then get into these different concentric neutral distances. And as I mentioned uh, before, what you're going to have is you're going to have these small d types of numbers that correspond to an individual cable. But when you're talking about systems, then you're going to have these different distances between, between the equivalent wires. And if you're, what you're going to have for phase A, for example, is you're going to have the phase conduct for A, and then you have the neutral equivalent neutral con conductor for A. Then for phase B, you're going to have the phase conductor, equivalent phase conductor, you have the equivalent neutral conductor. And for phase C, you have the same thing. All right, so you're going to have CP, and then you're going to have um, CN. So now when I talk about different sort of a distances, okay, if we're talking about the one cable, this you're going to have a distance between these two wires here, where this is going to be, in this case, this is going to be, I guess I would call like D, A, P, A, N, which is a D, I, P, comma, I, N term where I could be A, B, or C. This is going to be that neutral distance we just talked about before. It's got it right shown right up here, um, divided by two. So actually, this is kind of like a radius in a way, right? Um, but then you're going to have inner cable distances, right? And it could just be for the neutrals, or it could be for the um, neutral phase conductor combination. So whenever you're talking about a distance between two neutrals or between two phases, that's just going to be the same as the, the distance between the center points. But if you have a distance between, on say, phase I um, be, for the neutral versus phase J for the phase conductor, uh, that's, there's going to be another kind of a complicated expression for that. And that's going to be that this is going to be the cube root to the n power of dip jp to the nth power minus d neutral divided by q to the nth power. It turns out that when you'll see this in example, that this term for d is really going to be basically very similar to that term. And so, you know, if there's an approximation, you could assume these two um, cable to cable terms are basically going to be the same. But if you want to get into this a little bit more exact, you use this particular formula right here. And you'll see later on, I'll have an example of this where you can see where this equation gets used. All right, for the tape shield case, um, we're not going to really mess around with this too much in the class examples or the homework. But basically, this tape shield serves as a ground return. Because of this, since that tape shield is not really very thick, you have unbalanced load, you typically have to have a standalone neutral. Um, but anyway, the cross-sectional area is going to kind of define what the, what the resistance is going to be. Um, the GMR of the tape shield neutral 
is this uh, GMR um, neutral term. It's just simply the average uh, radius of the tape shield. Um, other sort of spacings that you're going to have is you're going to have the distance um, for a given cable, for a given phase A, let's say, for phase I between P and N. Uh, you're going to have the inner spacing distances between, you know, the, if you have a system right here, you're going to have these inner cable spacings here as well. And as I said before, you know, this gets kind of complicated in here. Um, you could use this equation on the previous slide, but a lot of times what's usually assumed is these, these terms are going to be pretty similar to each other. So in a practical system where you have this tape shield, since that shield cannot carry that much current, you typically have to have an additional wire. And what this means is you have two wires here, two wires here, two wires here, and one wire here. That's going to give you a seven wire system. And so this is a pretty complicated sort of system to, to come up with a model for. Um, now, as far as doing other calculations, Just stop this for a second, I'll be right back. So as far as doing other sort of calculations and other um, piece of the puzzle here is for, for ca is, is calculating capacitance. Um, something um, I'll start off with right here is, is what's the capacitance for just a cylindrical um, capacitor, all right? This is a, more of a theoretical case, I guess, to just to kind of see um, some base relationships, start off with some base relationships for capacitance. And what you're going to have is you're going to have this inner conductor here. Get this back into uh, the pin mode. You're going to have this inner conductor, and this is going to have a radius given by A. And then you're going to have a shield on the outside which is going to be at radius B. And if you have this very simple type of topography right here, this, this simple type of geometry right here, then what you're going to have is you're going to have a capacitance, which is going to be 2 pi times the, the relative permittivity um, with respect to free space times the permittivity of free space times the length divided through by the natural log of B divided by A. All right, so it's going to be dependent on um, the type of insulation he has. And I say a typical value of, of epsilon r would be something like 2.3. And then once you have this value for c, then the admittance is going to be j omega times c. So it's going to be a function of, of frequency. All right. So anyway, this would be kind of a, if you had a very simple sort of a cable, um, you know, this is how you would be calculating the capacitance for that. Um, however, given that we're going to have like, say, like a concentric neutral, you know, the equation gets a little bit more complicated than this. One thing that we're going to be assuming on here is that if you do have a moldy cable system, and if you do have a neutral that's wrapped around the phase conductor, that the electric field is going to be confined within the cable, all right? So with this, what we're gonna be assuming in this case is that this electric field does not cross couple between cables that is all confined within each cable. So what this means is that there's only gonna be a self capacitance in this case. There's only gonna be a capacitance associated with each cable's phase conductor and neutral. Um, there's not gonna be any cross coupling between the cables in this case. So if that's gonna be the situation, and again, I'm not going to go through the derivation on this. If we're talking about the admittance of an individual cable, say for phase I, then this is going to be J omega 2 pi times the permittivity of free space times the relative permittivity. Uh, if we want to get this in terms of a per mile sort of a number, 
we have to multiply this by 1609 meters per mile for the unit conversion. And then when we talk about this natural log type term of B with respect to A, since we're working with a concentric neutral, it gets a little bit more complicated than this, where it's going to be the natural log of D neutral over D phase minus a correction factor for the due to the fact we actually have stranding. And so this is minus the natural log of n times the um, D strand divided by D neutral normalized by, by n. And this is going to have units of Siemens per mile. Uh, we have a a formula for the shield cable that looks pretty similar to this. And so if we just simply have the sh tape shield cable, uh, we get this expression here for the, for the admittance. All right, so let's go ahead and, and work through some examples. And let's talk about how we take the equations that we had for overhead and basically make use of these equivalent distances because basically we're going to use exactly the same relationships that we use for overhead. The only difference is that instead of using the, the distances between the overhead, uh, we're going to have to come up with some, some different distance terms um, based on some of these corrections if we're working, say, with a concentric neutral or tape shield case. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at a single phase cable example. And this would be the one I would kind of expect you to be able to work out on your own. I'm not going to give you more complicated three phase problems of work because I'll show you in my example, they're pretty numerically complicated. But let's suppose we've got uh, a four aught aluminum. Um, that's that's going to be a material AA concentric neutral cable. And it's going to be used for like a single phase lateral. So this would be like a residential single phase service. And what we're going to be um, looking at on here is we're going to be looking at a kind of a situation where we've, we've got this cable. And what this is going to give us is this is going to give us a two wire system. And if we have a two wire system, then we're going to get it at uh, a primitive impedance matrix that's going to be two by two. Remember when we we're talking about like overhead three phase, that was like a four by four. We'll assume that the um, earth resistivity is, is 100 ohm meters. So what I want to do in this case is I want to calculate what this primitive impedance matrix is be. I guess we would call the Z prime terms. Uh, and then we want to figure out too, well, if I'm going to do like a per phase calculation, what would be the equivalent A phase model that we would want to have as far as the series resistance and reactance? And then also I want to get the per phase admittance. So what I'm going to be getting for my model is if I have a single phase load in the source, I want to basically calculate what resistance and reactance and what admittance do I want to put into this model so I can do, say, like a voltage drop calculation. So if I know I've got this cable that's going to be um, 4 aught concentric neutral, I got to have some data about it, right? I got to, I, I don't, I'm not told right here any information about the construction, right? So what you would do is you would go to a table where you'd have values for your cable. And what I can see here for the 4 aught. And this, let's just go ahead and assume we're working with a full neutral in this case. For aught, basically, I, I see this little 19 times by it. What this basically is telling me that I'm going to have 19 strands of wire that, that make up this four aught wire, right? Something else I also am told is I'm told this diameter information. So the, um, the outside diameter is going to be 1.28 inches. But that's on the outside. This is one of the terms I'm going to need. You have a diameter over the screen, which is given by 1.08, and you have a diameter of the insulation that's given by 1.01. .01. So not a, a very thick um, insulation shield in this case. We've also got some information about how we have the concentric neutral set up where we've got 13 wire of number 10 AWG. 
And then we're told that the ampacity of this phase conductor is going to be 230 amperes. Right. So this is all the critical information we need that I pulled off on the right. So the next thing we would do is we would then look at our four aught and we would look at our number 10 wire. And, you know, we'd kind of dig down a little bit more and get some more data about it. Um, before I do that, again, I just want to point out, you know, what's the four aught and what's the number 10 in this case. And this is the four aught right here. This is each of these wires here is a number 10 AWG. And then basically this outside diameter is the diameter going from just the outside of one of these fate, these uh, neutral conductors over to the other side to just on the outside. So it's, it's, it's again, it's an outer diameter type of a number. And we'll go ahead and assume that the insulation dielectric is 2.3. If you're not told otherwise, that would be a good number to use. Uh, so anyway, this is all the different distances uh, associated with this. Um, you're going to have like the diameter for the phase in this case. You're going to have the diameter for the strand in this case. Um, sometimes I use a capital DS for this in the equations. You're going to have a distance from the center to the middle of one of these concentric neutral, which is going to be given by DPN in this case, or DA, I guess you can call it DAN as well. Um, but these are all the different sort of distance numbers that we're going to be working with in this case. And then what you need to do is for the four aught and then for the number 10, you got to pull some additional information out. So for the four aught, we got to get the actual diameter, we get the resistance in ohms per mile, we get the GMR information, we get the ampacity, um, which is a little bit different than we what we had before. But keep in mind that this ampacity takes the cable construction into account. So you have some more heating effects where this would be the ampacity of this conductor like in free space. And then, for the number 10 wire, then we've got the diameter, we got the resistance, we got the GMR, et cetera. Uh, and then we're gonna use all this information in doing the cable calculation. So what we're gonna be needing to do is get this term right here, DPN. And how are we gonna get that? Because that term wasn't actually directly given to us. We had an outside diameter and we had the diameter of a strand. Well, in this case for the cable, if, if what you want to get is this particular number, what we could do is we could take this number and we could subtract off this number. Um, and so if we want to get that in terms of DPN, what I can do is I can take this outside diameter, I could subtract off the strand diameter, I can divide by two, that will give me DPN if I want to get this in units of feet, just to be consistent for the numerator and denominator of my log expressions. Then I divide that by 12, and this is going to give me a value of DPN, which is 0 0.0491 feet. Uh, the GMR for the phase conductor um, converted into feet is this term. The GMR for the strand conductor converted into feet is this particular term. And then the GMR for the neutral, I've got to use this equation where I'm taking the, um, the root to the number of neutral conductors. And so I got 13 neutral conductors in this case. So I take the GMR for one of the strands, I multiply by the number of strands times DPN to the power of N minus one. And this is going to give me 0 0.0486 feet for the equivalent um, GMR of the, all the neutral wires put together. One other thing I'll point out, you know, as far as what we're assuming in this situation is that if I have like an earth return and what, what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have a cable that in a way is kind of laid over that in a way. And what we do at each end is we're going to go ahead and assume that this concentric neutral is going to be bonded to Earth. And so in a way, um, not only do we have 
the two wires associated with this cable, but there's also going to be the equivalent dirt wire, if you want to think about that way, associated with earth. So actually, in a way, this is actually kind of like a three wire system in a way. You got the phase conductor, you've got the neutral, the concentric neutral, and then you have the earth return. And this is why we're going to be applying Carson's equations when we do this calculation now. So it's going to be very, very similar. It's going to be very, very similar to working with overhead, um, except now what we got to be doing is we've got to be using these terms right here for the GMR, the phase wire, and the neutral wire um, when we're, we're doing the calculations. OK, so now let's, let's start to calculate the different impedance terms. And what you're going to have in this case is you're going to have a term ZAA. And in this case, I did not put a prime number. I should, probably should have put little primes in here. Um, where ZAA primed is going to be um, RP plus RE plus J.1213 times the natural log of DE over GMRP. All right. This D sub E is the same term we use for overhead. This is the part of the Carson's correction. OK, so anyway, what we're using in this case is we're using the GMR for the phase conductor. right? So we're adding in here the effect of the Earth return. And what this is going to give us, this is going to give us 0.5793 plus J, 1.465 ohms per mile. Um, the other thing we're going to have in here is we're going to get a ZNN term. And actually, I don't think I need to have these in here. Uh, I'm going to have a ZNN term, which is going to be RN plus RE plus J.1213 times the natural log of GE, natural log of DE over GMR N for the neutral. And so this is um, where what I do in this case is I use this equivalent neutral system GMR. Um, and anyway, this is going to give me my ZNN term. This is going to be um, 0.5493 plus J uh, 1.329 ohms per mile. So anyway, uh, what I've got is I've got my um, expressions right here for ZAA and ZNN. I need to get a ZAN term. So anyway, this is going to be 0.0953 plus um, J 1.3279, which I get um, from using the natural log of DE over DPN. OK, so what, remember what the ZPN term is, is kind of the distance between the center here and the middle of the concentric neutral. Uh, I got to get that in terms of feet. So remember, you got to get these units in the numerator denominators all the same. Either you got to be in all in feet or all in inches. And then what I have right here is then I have the impedance matrix. And so what I'm going to want to do is this is two by two. So I, this is representing a this is representing a three kind of a three wire equivalent in a way if you consider the Earth as a wire. But once I apply Carson's corrections, then I'm going to have this two by two. And in order to get rid of the neutral, I do what I did before for the overhead, where I do a chrome reduction. And so ZA is going to be ZAA minus ZAN times ZNA over ZNN. And this equivalent value right here is going to be 0.8827 plus J.2702 ohms per mile. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I didn't need to have these primes on here. I, I've already um, accounted for the earth return effect. And so anyway, um, this is what we refer to as a primitive impedance matrix. Is it has all the detail about the neutral. But given that we don't really care to model, we don't need the neutral in doing our calculations. We want to get rid of it. I do the Crohn reduction to reduce it out. And um, basically, I kind of get this equivalent series impedance. So again, if I had a source, and if I had a load, what I'm calculating is I'm calculating basically the impedance that would put in there in series. 
and this is just this is just single phase. So then I could also get the capacitance associated with this. Um, this is going to get YPN. I got this kind of a complicated formula in this case. Um, doing these different sort of calculations right here in, in inches this time. Um, you know, why do I do it in terms of inches? I guess maybe because most of my units were for my D terms were all in inches to begin with. So I'm, I'm just kind of doing the same sort of thing in inches in this case. The important thing is just make sure that I'm consistent in the units in the numerator and denominator. And then when you substitute in here, assuming that the relative permittivity is 2.3, uh, that gives me a net admittance in this case of J96.11 microsiemens per mile. All right, so the longer this cable is, the more this, this admittance term is going to be. So again, what you would do in this case is you would put, you have your ZA here, and then you would have your shunt capacitance. And when you do the model, what you would do is you would put half of the admittance on one side and half of the admittance on the other side. And that's what's referred to as a pi equivalent model. All right. Um, if you wanted to do this in Millsoft, you can do all this stuff in Millsoft. And I'm going to get through a little bit more detail of this for the three phase, but I just wanted to show you that this can be done in Millsoft. And so you could take all these parameters in here and you can look on this more on your own. And what you'll actually get in this case is you'll get the same series Z value. It's sort of interesting that it gives you other terms for the admittance, even though it's not there. It's obviously just a single phase in this case. Um, maybe that's sort of like a bug in the program, but you can see that all these admittance and impedance terms do indeed match up. All right, so let's take a look at a three phase cable system example. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. And then in the third part, I'll, I'll finish this up then.